Welcome to Console Empires. Today, I'm going to show you a Feudal Age longsword build order for the new Armanian Civ. Let's go. All right, so this starts off just like any other build order. So grab your first three villagers, put two of them on one house, one on the other, get your scout moving, get a sheep under the TC. And from here forward, it's going to be a little bit different. So if you're new to the game and don't know any build orders yet, you might not want to start with this one. So if you are looking for a more basic controller specific scout rush tutorial, I do have a, another build order guide on that. For this one, you need to scout with your sheep in addition to the scout, because you need to find that deer patch pretty early to be able to make the timings work out for this one at the end of the dark age. So once you've got everything up and running here at the start, we're going to send the first seven villagers to sheep rather than six being the traditional amount as six is the minimum number that you'd need to keep the TC running without any idle time. And if you do manage to get through this build with no idle at all, it'll be a 10.05 uptime when you reach feudal age. We're gonna, I hit 10.10 here in the demo. So five seconds, it happens oh, when I'm lowering the bore in, which is a really common area to have idle time. So if you're trying to clean up your build, look there. So yeah, it's a 22 pop build, so a little bit slower. And that means a weakness of this is if you're against maybe Lithuanians or Incas that can drush really fast, or you're facing someone that does like the two militia French drush, or a fast scout sieve like Mongols can be problematic for this as they're gonna be up and attacking you a lot sooner where you're going for a little bit slower of an opening strategy. Compared to someone playing like straight archers, not as big of a deal as you're only gonna be behind by one villager. But against some of those faster builds, you could run into some trouble, but the Armenians, at least against scouts, have the bonus that you can make spears in Dark Age to help counteract with that since you might be in Dark Age a bit longer if you're trying to do something like this. So you might have noticed uh, I'm on stragglers already, so a bit weird, right? Not a typical build. So we've got our seven on sheep, then we send three to the straggler tree, just any of the ones closest to the TC there. And so once you're up to three chopping there on the stragglers, go ahead, grab those guys, grab one of the shepherds and send them all four out to the deer patch and make a mule cart. So we're not gonna push the deer, but we're actually gonna take all of them with the mule cart. And cool thing about the mule cart is you can move it. So unlike placing a mill on the deer, it doesn't really matter if the villagers push the deer further away from it as they hunt it. You don't need to worry about pushing it up with your scout. You can just move the mule cart up and wherever the fallen, the zebra here in this case are, you can just keep a perfectly efficient gather point right next to it. Uh, putting the mule cart on a control group can actually be helpful to be able to flip back over here or setting a navigation waypoint on that area with the deer. But so yeah, we're going to get these villagers. I'll shift queue them onto the three zebras and then eventually back to the berry patch. But so once you've got the mule cart set up over there, the next villager that comes out makes a house and then brings in the boar while leaving the gather point on your straggler tree. And so by the time you've got a few villagers chopping on that straggler again, you'll have enough wood to make another mule cart. And we're going to put this one on the wood line. So that one, we're not going to move it around. It's just going to hang out at the wood line. You can let it follow the villagers to keep that efficiency up. And so we'll bring in the boar here. And from this point with the boar in, we got to focus on wood for a little bit, getting up to six or seven on wood. I do six here and it's a little tight. Seven might be a little bit more comfortable, but either way, you just want to make sure that you can get the barracks under construction before you click feudal age so you can queue up those militia in time. So we need to add extra to wood here because at the beginning we invested both in making that mule cart and also didn't send the villagers then to the wood line. They haven't been sitting here chopping that whole time. We've been focusing on food up until this point and we just need a whole bunch of wood in short order here to get that barracks up on time. Make sure that we can hit the timing, get the longswords upgrade right after we get to feudal age. So as the first boar starting to run out of meat, gonna send another villager out to build a house and bring in the next. My timing might not be exactly ideal here, that's why I moved the sheep in closer so the villagers would at least have something to harvest. Uh, at least, you know, trading a bit of decay on a second animal going down is better than just letting them stand idle until the lore comes in. So keeping an eye as well on the mule cart as we do this. And at this point, we've got 20 population. I'm gonna move the gather point over there to gold. And looks like the sheep was actually an unnecessary precaution as the rhino comes in there just as the uh, its compatriot expires down there underneath the town center. So it takes just about your whole Dark Age to harvest the deer, the zebra, the ostrich, whatever, that you put the mule cart on. As those complete, you then are going to move those guys over to berries and take that mule cart and send it over to the gold pile. So we've got all our villagers now. Loom is in the queue, barracks going up, and we've got plenty of food here from the rhino to get our advance right on time. Well, five seconds late, but <laughs> no biggie there. All right, here we go up to feudal age. 
Ayo, terim tagavor. Ramang zerk, terim tagavor, terim tagavor. Yes. Sending those guys over to the berries. Don't quite have the wood for the mill just yet. So the build is a bit tight on wood. And you might have to delay your wood upgrade not being able to afford it immediately as soon as you get to feudal age if you want to be able to produce villagers and longswords. It a little bit depends on which food spawn you get on the map. For example, an elephant has more food than a boar does, and some maps you'll get three deer or four. So there's a few variables in addition to how cleanly you uh, micro the villagers as far as decay and walking time and whatnot. So here in this game, I end up going for both eco upgrades kind of mid to late feudal age, but I do actually end up housed right at the start of feudal. So the TC's idle for a moment anyway, so I maybe should have just got bit axed right away and canceled the villagers out of the queue at that point. So moving this villager back towards the TC, not uh, as part of the build particularly, but just that she's weak. So I wanted to try to keep the weak villagers in closer to where they've got some protection. So just about to feudal age, just about have our three militia, have the two villagers queued up there from the TC. See, we've got the resources, we'll be able to grab men-at-arms right away. And we've got pretty good scouting on the enemy base. So sometimes it can be difficult to know where everything is as far as uh, your enemy resources and all that if you had spent as much time with the scout pushing the deer and here you taking advantage of the mule cart you have more of an opportunity to send the scout forward earlier get a look around and even actually if you're faster uh, than me be able to harass the enemy maybe block them from pushing their deer or pick off a unloomed villager earlier on in the dark ages you'd have uh, access to your scout to do that as it's not tied up with the push so here I wasn't looking too much at my scout in uh, Dark Age. Just wanted to focus actually on getting a clean demonstration of the build order with as little idle time as possible to show you guys. See here we've got Longsword in the queue, we've got our men at arms ready to attack. So this is a pretty big investment to go for the Longsword upgrade right away. So it's worth it to micro these a bit, try to block with the scout and make sure that you get some kills where with typically a Drush or Men-at-Arms, just the harassment and idle time aspect of it can be enough to make it worth it. But with this build, because it's, it's a bigger investment that you're going up slower, it costs that extra food. So I'm really focusing on trying to get as much value out of the Longswords as possible. And so these guys have nine attack, which is significantly more than any other Feudal Age unit, but they're still infantry. So you're gonna be lacking mobility, especially without Squires at this point. So there's definitely some trade-offs that you'll be making here versus going with a more meta build order like scouts or archers, but you could certainly have some fun with this. And it's not just a meme strat. I think this can absolutely be viable, at least situationally. All right, so how do you defend against this? So what's gonna throw the Armenian player off here is if you're able to attack them really early, like if your Mongols can go for that super fast scout rush. Another weakness once this has hit you in Feudal Age, if you're responding to this, you know, archers, obviously, are going to be the play against infantry. The longswords, though, have plus three attack from that longsword upgrade, plus any upgrades that your opponent might grab from the blacksmith as well, that the archers are going to be really squishy as far as if they actually take any hits. So you have to really, really focus on microing those guys. Make sure you've got a decent ball of them and keep them away from the longswords, as if the longswords are able to get in close, they can actually do pretty good damage, take good trades against the archers. They're not as strong as bona fide castleage longswords, of course, as you don't yet have access to the armor upgrades or gambesons. But at the same time, you're fighting just against feudal age archers, and at the very start, they might not even have fletching yet compared to crossbow with bodkin. So if you do this, what you can do now, there's actually a lot of flexibility in this as how you play through your feudal age into castle from this start. As because going up slower, you'll have a pretty healthy eco by the time you get into this. What I'm doing here against the AI is just focusing just on the three longswords, almost treating it like a Drush FC. I just attack with the longswords and the scout and cause enough harassment with those to be able to keep myself safe at home. So you can try to play it that way. That's a bit more of a greedy kind of approach. <laughs> But if you do make it to Castle Age that way, you'll have a pretty strong eco behind the pressure there and be able to get two-handed swordsmen and all the Castle Age upgrades go up to two barracks and really go all in on the infantry. Or even try out the new Warrior Priest, which is actually a better unit than the Longsword uh, in a number of ways, but you would have to add the Fortified Churches in to be able to access that, where with these guys, you could already uh, you could get supplies and keep making them on the way up and then have kind of like a power spike just hitting 
the two-hand swordsman upgrade as soon as your castle age comes in. Another thing that you might want to do instead is just treat it kind of like men at arms into archers. I did add the range at the start here, like that was my first feudal age building. The range has the purpose of you're likely to cause your opponent to make archers to try to counter you here. So building a range right away to give you access to skirmishers, even if you don't want to transition into archers yourself, can be a useful idea. So I'm just now getting horse collar here at 18 farms, which is kind of an awkward timing that typically, uh, say if you're going for scouts, you'd want to try to get it right away. Or if you're going for archers, just delay it actually until you're on the way up to castle age. And so here with this one, with that flexibility, as when you reach feudal, are you going to follow up with archers or depending on what you want to do, could affect when you want to get horse collar. All right, so that's the controller feudal age longswords Armenian build. Mouthful of <laughs> titles spit out there. I'm gonna have to finesse that a bit before actually making the thumbnail and all that. But yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know how this goes for you if you try this out in your games. I think it's probably more viable on a map like Hideout, as you're gonna have that little bit of protection to help keep you safe while this one gets rolling a bit slower. Even on Arabia, if you're not up against a super fast Civ, like while well, the other new DLC Civ, the Georgians can do a no wood build order, that was like 17 pop up time with scouts, could cause you some problems. But against any generic sieve without a great early eco bonus, I think you could certainly have some fun with this.